Good evening and welcome once again to Crusty Bread, our Wednesday reflection at St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Chester, Pennsylvania. I am the Reverend Deirdre Whitfield. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this evening comes from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 29 through 41. Otherwise, what will those people do who receive baptism on behalf of the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized on their behalf? And why are we putting ourselves in danger every hour? I die every day. That is as certain, brothers and sisters, as my boasting of you, a boast that I make in Christ Jesus our Lord. If with merely human hopes I fought with wild animals at Ephesus, what would have gained, what would I have gained by it if the dead are not raised? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Come to a sober and right mind and sin no more, for some people have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. Not all flesh is alike, but there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one thing and that of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. Indeed, star differs from star in glory. The word of the Lord. Paul is really, really going to task here. I wanna look specifically at the phrase, bad company ruins good morals. It's actually derived from a comedy written by the popular Greek author Menander around 300 BC. And this proverb was common in the ancient world. Those Christians in Corinth with a defective view of the resurrection not only had been influenced by the bad company they kept, but in their turn, they were corrupting others in the congregation. That was a problem. So you see, Paul is once again quite frustrated with this church in Corinth. And, you know, to their defense, there are so many people out there. Do we not get stories from people that are different from what we have, what we know to be true? Because most of the time, there's so many people out there who are really just in whatever it is that they're doing, they're in it for themselves. They're not in it for God. And what is that issue in this passage, passage is the uh, issue of resurrection, this, this resurrection. Paul knows that the resurrection is real. He experienced it himself. And so many of the disciples as well who are out there preaching know that the resurrection is real. So we have those who have really experienced and know that the resurrection is real. And so as he is building this church in Corinth, of course, he is teaching this, this resurrection. But they're getting it confused. The congregants in, in Corinth are really getting it confused because they're getting these questions like, 
you know, well, what kind of body, you know, if you're going to be raised for the dead, what, what will the body look like? So, of course, you know, a dead body being raised from the earth is, is, uh, would look pretty bad. But, you know, Paul in his intellect uh, kind of speaks in, in metaphors. And I would imagine that, you know, most of the people pretty much understood. He was a great orator. He really was a good speaker. He's a very learned person. We know this for sure. And so, you know, unfortunately, he calls them fools because he's saying to them, you know, how are you expecting a body to be raised? He said, what is from the earth, you know, is from the earth and what is from the heavenly is from the heavenly. So he's trying to get them to understand. And what we have to understand is that the resurrection is a spiritual one. It is a spiritual one. It's not this, you know, we're all of a sudden going to be walking the earth again in the bodies that God has given us. And he uses the, the, the metaphor of the seed that is sowed. And he says that the sowing of the seed is not in this bodily form. He said it's, it's something that has to die. When you take a grain of wheat, it has to die. And this outer shell comes off and it dies. It falls to the ground. And what comes out, what is raised up, is nothing like what actually dies. So when you add that to, you know, our regular everyday life and we're walking on this journey, you know, the life that we live in the world must die so that we can begin to live in the spirit and understand that we are connected to the spirit of Christ that has risen. And so, too, we will rise as well, even as we are on this earthly in this earthly body, but this body is going to die. And when the body dies, it is the spirit that is raised and the spirit that is raised with Christ. But we have the benefit of knowing this and we have the benefit of being raised spiritually even today as we walk on this earth. And this is what he's trying to get them to understand and they just, they, they can't seem to separate the the earthly body from the spiritual body. And that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. And they're listening to people who are just telling the story completely wrong. And, you know, with self-motivated, you know, motives. And, and they're beginning to believe. And he says, you know, it, it makes no sense for you to even believe this, that, it, that there is no resurrection when... You are baptizing people into a, into a life, baptizing people to people who are dead, and then you say there is no, rec no resurrection. So he's trying to get them to understand that even as you practice the baptism, you're sort of contradicting yourself. And so um, he says you are hanging around the wrong people. And it's, it's so true. Sometimes we hang around the wrong people. And if we hang around them long enough, we begin to believe what they believe. We begin to do what they do. And what happens? We get ourselves into trouble. And that's what Paul is really trying to help the this church in Corinth to understand is to stop hanging around these people who are speaking contrary to what you know, to your knowledge of God and who God is, because there are people who don't know them at all. And so that we should be ashamed to know God and then not believe in what we know to be true about God. And so we have to learn that if we're gonna to continue to hang around people who are going, that we know don't understand God, then we're gonna be corrupted and then even worse, we're going to corrupt other people. And then and then that's that's really an abomination to, you know, to those of us who are really trying to build up the body of Christ. That we don't take bad information, wrong information, and then spread it to other people, not as believers. That's not what we're called to do. So we have to understand that bad company corrupts good morals. And, and if we know and believe in God, and we know and believe in the, in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we have to begin walking in that particular, in that light, in that spirit. And so once we are baptized by water and by the spirit, we can no longer 
be tied to the earth and the world as it is. We have to continue to walk in the spirit of Christ and nothing else. I hope that that this this word this evening uh, gives you a little bit of, of insight and uh, help as we continue this journey throughout this Easter season and we walk in the resurrection. I hope that you will be blessed as well. And remember, don't focus on the crust of life outside. Focus on the fluffy crumb inside.